Tell me about the process of writing your talk, putting it all together. First thing that I did, I kind of went through like how priesthood blessings are just the priesthood has blessed my life. And then I went to the temple very often. And I felt like each time I went to the temple, I either received a prompting that I needed to do or confirmation. A confirmation where everything's gonna turn out fine. Or I would either see like old bishops who helped me that didn't know what I was going through, but said things that really blessed my life and really helped me have that confidence to be able to write my talk. I had different experiences that led me. I wrote questions down on my mirror. And mm -hmm. then two months afterwards, I was able to answer that question and I used it for my talk. I also was like, maybe I can use an experience that has impacted me that everyone else probably goes to the similar things. I prayed about that and I felt that that, that experience was one that I needed to use. The, the temple really helped me. I loved going to the temple. It's something that I, that I do very often, but it was a very cool experience and I was able to see that every single time I went, I was able to receive something to help me. Isn't it amazing? We talk about going to the temple. We talk about really getting answers for our personal situations. Now you had a microcosm kind of cool experience because you knew you had to write this talk and you had to deliver it. So we tend to go, oh, I need to go to the temple and find out what the Lord needs me to do. But isn't it amazing that he can do that for chemistry, for relationships, everything? Yes, definitely. You know, you can write that question on the mirror and sometimes in two weeks or two months or two years or two decades, you have the answer. Yeah. <laughs> How was it delivering your talk? You walked into that room. It wasn't the conference center. Throughout the whole week, I was very anxious and nervous and I had lots of adrenaline going on. So I had a hard time sleeping. But that day, I wasn't as nervous. Mr. Bingham said, it's like a bubble that you walk into and a bubble when you walk out. That really was comforting to me. I honestly don't remember like walking up to the pulpit or walking back to my seat, but I do remember that I walked up, I smiled and then I started talking. And then after I sat down and I was like, whoa, that was so fast. It was as if I opened and closed my eyes, but it was such a beautiful spirit. I wasn't nervous at all. I felt like I was talking to my friends, to my family members. That was a really awesome experience. It's so unique because it truly is the Lord's talk. You noticed you went through the process of getting revelation and then decided, oh yeah, it's right. A confirmation that what you had just written was right or seeking another story or seeking another part of the talk. So you realize that the Lord, it's his talk. You just got a chance to deliver it, which is so cool. Yeah. When you stand up there, it's it truly is like a big, warm blanket goes over and it's like it's okay yes i definitely felt that did they allow you to practice with the teleprompter ahead of time yes that helped a lot so i loved it i was like this is so cool i'm reading yeah. my talk and no one can see that i'm reading it <laughs> <laughs> and the sweet thing, you got an opportunity to now see it in all the different print. A little bit weird, but it's awesome. <laughs> and you'll see your face in church news and you've seen your face as people have reached out to you and said, tell us about your experience. Yeah. Now that you've had this experience, what is one thing that you know about God, whether it's amplified or it's new or what, what would you tell them? I would tell them that Heavenly Father loves us and that he has a plan for us, each one of us. He will lead us to certain people, lead us to certain situations to help us grow and become more a person than we can even imagine. So if we try to keep the commandments and do our best, he will bless us. We'll be able to grow. And will it be easy? No. <laughs> no. What do you think the Lord has in store for you, Laudi? What does the next five years hold for you? I am in the process of figuring that out currently. Trying to figure out if serving a mission is what I need to do, or um, I'm still trying to decide which school to go to, and possibly marriage. I don't know, it's kind of crazy, but maybe I can be married in five years. <laughs> a lot happens in five years. Well, all of those things are good. School's good, missions are good, and obviously marriage is fabulous too. You are remarkable. The Lord had already prepared you in so many things through your life to speak and bless the lives of so many people. Life is good. Definitely. We have our challenges, but the Lord loves effort. The Lord does love effort. And we have to realize that we're not perfect. And with that same fervor that you worked on your talk, you asked the Lord about a mission and he'll give you the answer because you already know how to get that. Well, we love you dearly. How was your mom and dad? Were they excited about the whole process? All my siblings and my parents were very excited for the opportunity. You have a wonderful mother and father. And you will continue to bless lots of people. Thank you, Sister Gordon. I just love you dearly.
Is there anything I can do for you or do you have any questions? I just wanted to thank you. You made me feel so loved when I met you and I'm sure you make every young woman feel so loved when you meet them. So thank you for spreading your light and love to each young woman. Well, thank you, thank you. I won't keep your whole day. Know that I love you. Know that you're loved by your Heavenly Father. And he answers prayers. Now, when anybody speaks at General Conference, you'll know what they went through to put a talk together. Yes. <laughs> love you, Thank you. Take Bye. care. Love you. Have a great day. Bye. Bye.